Oh, bedtime could be a big source of fighting and conflict between parents and children. And here on the morning show, we know how important getting a good night's sleep is. It's essential for parents and children to have a, a functioning, successful day. Here with some tips on making bedtime a little easier is Jim Clark, president and CEO of Daniel and also a licensed social worker. Good morning. Good morning. How did you sleep last night? I slept fantastic. One I had some chocolate, so I was up. A little <laughs> caffeine. One of the perks of not having a family like myself is that usually I'm the only one standing in the way of getting a good night's sleep. I love mm -hmm. seeing parents. I kind of smile because some of them look like zombies because they have such a hard time getting a good night's sleep because of their kids. So how do, you, how do you get them to go to bed? You know, the first most important thing is to establish a bedtime and a bedtime routine. That's what you really have to do because you want to create consistency and, and that's one of the most important things. What uh, ages are we talking about here? Yeah, typically five and under, you know, maybe four-year-olds. I mean, hopefully by the time a child's in kindergarten or going to that phase, they have already it, have their own bed in their own bedroom. That's really important part in terms of child development. But usually we're talking about under five and indeed you want to have some consistency. You want to start that routine about a half an hour beforehand. And if you have a very hyper child maybe an hour beforehand and that's when you get them the, their pajamas you, you start to brush their teeth those type of quiet things that you start to do to start to establish that routine now what happens if the kid wants to sleep in your room it has been sleeping in your room and you're trying to transition and get him into his own bed sure it doesn't matter if it's babies or if it's toddlers or that your child has at some point in time uh, going through some kind of trauma and wants to sleep with mommy and daddy. It's really important for children to have their own bed. And you need to phase that out. Some people do it gradually. What they'll do is they'll, they'll read a story, then after the story they'll sit on the bed, and, uh, and then after they sit on the bed they'll walk to the edge of the bed. A kind of a gradual separation. Uh, and if the child starts to scream or say, Mommy, Mommy, come back, you only come back to, to the farthest part that you were at. And then you start to kind of gradually uh, let them go. If they throw a tantrum, do you, do you ignore it at first? Do you lock them in their, not lock them in their room, <laughs> but I mean, do you shut the door and leave them alone and hope it just kind of, they fall asleep on their own? Certainly, certainly. Depending on your own child, you're going to do what certain phases. But that may be one. It's just to say, honey, now it's time. Whatever you do, you don't want to succumb to a tantrum because they'll just repeat the behavior. The biggest thing to remember is caffeine at night with children. Those are the and things to avoid. That's, those are the things to avoid. You don't want to have caffeine. Watch how much TV. There's lots of research that says the children who watch TV right before uh, tend to have more of a difficulty. Make sure that you have a routine and establish that routine. If you have sibling groups, you want to separate them. You know, every child needs to have their own routine yeah. as they go to bed. And ca caffeine, chocolate, I mean, caffeine's in everything. It's a, well, it's kids. in soda, yeah. it's in tea, it's in, so you do want to be somewhat careful with that. Right. And the big thing, too, is reassure them and, and say goodnight. All right, Jim. Hey, thanks, man. Thank you. Now I'm sleeping. <laughs> Stay with us, everybody, because next hour of the morning show here at 8 o'clock starts in one minute. We'll see you then.